there's a cricket and it won't leave my studio. All right, so today we are going to talk about chef knives and Kyoto's. Uh, I get lots of folks that ask me what is the difference between the two. I have here five knives. I have the version of what a Western knife is all the way to what you see as a Japanese traditional knife. So the first here is the Dow Strong Gladiator Series German knife. As you got to see, there's a massive balsa that goes from the top of the spine all the way down to the bottom of the edge. This here is really suited for those who prefer a pinch grip. So pinch grips are great for those who like to draw their knives on the cutting board, you know, chicken, beefs, steak, and you're just slicing through the meat. These are heat treated to a 55 on the Rockwell scale. So what that really means is it's soft. The steel will more likely bend than chip. So knives on the really higher end, you can, you can find knives up to 68 or even 70 these days. Those knives will chip really easily, but they stay sharp and they are very hard to sharpen. So softer steels tend to be very easy to sharpen and they just are more robust in terms of cutting into things like bone and hard vegetables. Now the next thing to notice here is the height of the blade. Uh, as you guys can see here, this is one of the taller knives in this lineup besides this one right here. But compare this to a Japanese knife, you see how much taller it is. So this really lends itself well to having that rocking motion, okay? If you are a chopper and rocker on the cutting board, the European knives um, have a nice curved top and also a nice curved cutting edge. Coming down to the handle, oftentimes German knives or Western knives just have a really thick and uh, hefty handle, okay? That's just how they're designed. It's not necessarily better than a lighter wooden handle. It's just different. Uh, they tend to be more robust and they just have a lot more weight to them. Uh, next here we have this Willing Pro. Now this knife here is still really a, a german knife it really is a western knife but what is different now is it's removed the bolster there still is a bolster but what it does is it tapers down quite nicely to a very very fine point so that's why these are kind of in the kind of edging towards the hybrid gyoto or hybrid chef knife uh, still using stainless steel this here is heat treated to a 55 and as you guys can see here these two knives have a very similar profile they both have you know nice hefty handles uh, very very good strong handles with three rivets, which is very typical. Uh, they're great for cutting into things like squash and just hard vegetables. They do get sharp, but the only difference is they don't stay sharp for as long as a knife that is heat treated to a 60 or an above, which is what you'll see in the Japanese lineup. This here is the Dow Strong Shogun Series X. This is what you would consider a hybrid Gyoto or a hybrid chef knife. They offer the same height and flexibility of the Western knives, okay, they're very easy to rock on, very easy to use, very user friendly, but they also have the sharpness and the technology, the core steel technology of a Japanese knife. This is using VG10, but heat treated to a 62 on the Rockwell scale. So even though this has a very similar profile as the Gladiator series, as you can see here, it just has that sharpness and that thinness of a blade that you are used to in seeing a Japanese knife. The handle here is pretty much a Western handle, very ergonomic and definitely a smaller handle than the Gladiator, even though these are the same size blades. The handle on the Gladiator is more hefty, more robust. This is not a weak handle at all. It just has a more refined feel to it. In terms of the blade though, very fantastic blade. I've had the Dow Strongs in my collection for about a week and they are just absolutely a joy to use. I especially love the X series. The rocking motion of this profile is just absolutely fantastic. This is a hammered finish and you'll find this with a lot uh, of Japanese knife makers. It's called a sumichi finish. It basically just means hammered finish. It has a really nice textured organic feel to it. it. This is also a rose Damascus finish, which is really nice. Damascus on a lot of knives are kind of the parallel. Uh, you see these parallel lines, but these have the parallel lines in addition to these um, spots and blotches. And so it just has a really nice look and feel to the knife. This has the robustness of a Western build, but the cutting edge and the thinness of a Japanese knife. And that's what's so special about these. Dow Strong has really done a fantastic example of integrating two technologies from two different cultures. So this here is the Dow Strong Shogun Series nine and a half inch chef knife. You have the VG10 core steel. Now I believe this one here is heat treated to a 63 on the Rockwell scale. So definitely extremely hard. Um, you will rarely find true Western knives are over 60. That's mainly because Western knives are built to cut into bone or to hack bone if they actually do. And so they tend to go with the softer steels. Um, Japanese knife users, they're cutting a lot of fish, a lot of chickens and beef and steak, but they're not cutting into any bone. So that's why Japanese knives tend to 
steer more towards sharpness than robustness. So the other obvious thing here is the height. Uh, you'll see now that this is actually starting to get relatively short compared to its sibling here. So it's about a it's almost a half an inch shorter in terms of overall height. The profile now is starting to get a little bit straighter. You're getting less of that big arc and uh, more of a gradual straightness and a kind of a softer belly or a less pronounced belly. Now on my far right here, this is what you would consider a true or very typical Japanese knife. You've got your wall handle. This is the octagonal handle. The profile is very short relative to the other three knives. And you have a very, very straight bottom half of the cutting edge. Uh, that again has to do with how they are just designed and the mentality of a Japanese knife maker. This here is heat treated to a 66 on the Rockwell scale. So knives with a Rockwell rating of 62 and above, I really recommend you not rocking them on the cutting board and here is why. So I get lots of emails from subscribers that ask me why is my Japanese knife chipping at the tip or at the belly. So when you're rocking on the cutting board, you bring the knife up and you twist the knife as you're rocking it, okay? So this is very exaggerated, but you are twisting the knife on the tip here, on the belly. And so because these knives are so hard, that belly can catch into the cutting board and actually chip. So the next thing we should talk about is sharpening. So this here is a ceramic steel. This is a really great tool to have if your primary cutting tool is gonna be a Western knife. Reason being is you can keep this in your knife drawer. It doesn't require any soaking any water, you simply grab your knife and you strop it a few times. Ceramic rods are great because they don't take any mastering of your uh, stroking techniques. You simply can grab the knife like that and you are an expert at knife sharpening on a ceramic rod and your knife is sharp. Over time, you definitely will want something like a whetstone that will help you take off more material to expose your brand new edge. So whetstones are great because they give you a much cleaner edge because they take off a lot more material. Uh, but they also take a little bit more time to perfect. But with a whetstone, it takes a few sharpening sessions to really get used to the angles. So the amount of time that you have to invest into your sharpening technique will really determine how sharp your knife is as opposed to what type of knife you're buying. So yes, on an absolute scale, Japanese knives will be sharper, but they can, they can take weeks or months to develop that technique. Uh, but on a Western knife, within a few seconds, you can get a pretty sharp knife that will be usable in any kitchen. You're probably wondering what knife have I been using in my kitchen? Uh, well, I use all these knives, really, and they, I go through them on a weekly basis. But as uh, as of this week, I have been using the Dalstrong Chogun X series. Uh, this has been a fantastic knife. The profile is great. The steel is really nice. The handle is fantastic. I'm really enjoying this knife. I'm not gonna be returning this back to Dalstrong, so I hope they don't mind. All these knives here are quite nice. They all have their purposes in the kitchen. Uh, this, the HAP40 is a super hard steel. I've been using this for about three months now, and uh, I only sharpen it in my videos, but if I never had to do my videos, this knife would probably last um, three to four months without having to be resharpened. This Willing has been a fantastic knife. It's a soft steel, so every three days, I have to just run the knife on the pointing rod but in terms of sharpness it does get fairly sharp ergonomics is great overall it is a really nice profile i really enjoy this knife as well so do you agree with what i just said do you think japanese knives can complement western knives and vice versa or do you believe that japanese knives are better or western knives are better let me know what you think all right thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video